My name is Carol Lee, and I'm the chair of the Vancouver Chinatown Foundation. Well, Carol, you're an accomplished social innovator, but if I were to take you back and have you start a new social innovation project from scratch, what would you do to ensure you have the support you need for success? I think if I were to start all over again, one of the most, um, I think, important elements um, for us is, is setting up um, advisory boards and boards. Um, you know, we have a very small staff at the, at the foundation, but I think we were really able to leverage off um, sort of the, the connections of people that were on our board and shared the vision for what we were trying to achieve. Um, I think that that has been invaluable. You know, just to keep them abreast of sort of what you're doing all the time, I think engagement is key. So it's one thing to get people involved, but um, the more engaged you keep them, the more interested um, they will become and the more active that, that they will become. I think that the other thing that uh, I would recommend, um, early on we were very lucky that we had a number of, I will call them foundational organizations that really had our back. Um, and it was a very different kind of relationship. So um, it wasn't the one where, you know, and money always helps. So, you know, where they're writing a check for, you know, a gala or a sponsorship. This is something where I would say they were intimately involved in what we were doing and they did a lot of the heavy lifting for us. So I'm thinking five years ago, one of our advisors was John MacArthur, who was the chair of our advisory board, convened a meeting and it was to review our strategy. And so he had asked uh, Frank Batiste, uh, he was at the, then the, the head of Deloitte Canada, to uh, do a strategy session with um, the people at McKinsey. I, I'm sure that this is probably one of the first times they've ever had to work together on, on something like this, because it's a very you know, tiny foundation. But there's many, many others. I would say you know, the Royal Bank, when, when we had to do the Light Up Chinatown event this year, um, we had three and a half weeks to launch this event. It was a street party. Uh, we were trying to uh, attract 8,000 people to come back to the neighborhood. It was after COVID. We were really worried that people wouldn't want to come back. I went to, uh, I sent a letter to the bank asking if they would be our presenting sponsor. And they kind of, they came back and said, well, we'll be the platinum sponsor. But it's like, oh, but we really need you to come in and, and take this, um, this presenting sponsor. And, and, you know, they said, well, there's only three and a half weeks left to go. And, and they said, uh, we said, well, you just got to trust us. And they did. This is how we're going to have to navigate going forward because government is no longer the solution. Uh, the problems are so huge and, and unwieldy. It, it, it's not kind of like the days when I was growing up and we say, oh, government's going to come in and fix it. Um, we are going to have to be a partner with all sorts of institutions, and I would say in some ways leading the charge. Um, and there's many different things. I, I think there's a lot of exciting areas uh, in which people can work on and help um, pull together, you know, different groups of people um, to try and help solve some of these big issues. I think, you know, as a, an organization, um, to give people hope is probably one of the, I think, one of the best things that I think that you know, we can give them hope that the future is going to look better. Hope that there's other people out there in the community that care about you and hope that we can work together and um, provide a better future. <laughs>